Good afternoon, everyone. We're just about ready to begin the ceremony. Please take a moment and silence all cell phones and devices. Thank you, and hope you enjoy the ceremony. <laughs> all right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Class of 2027 White Coat Ceremony. My name is Brookie Best, and I am the Dean of the UC San Diego Skagg School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. I'd like to start off the ceremony by inviting our Associate Dean for Admissions and Recruitment, Dr. Rabia Atayi, to provide a welcome message and introduce our esteemed guest speaker today. Thank you, Dean Vest. Good evening to our faculty, staff, honored guests, proud families up there, loved ones, and most importantly, our distinguished first year student pharmacist. I also want to point out that we have a special guest here tonight with us, Dr. Kathy Lamb, president of our San Diego chapter of the California Pharmacist Association. Thank you, Dr. Lamb, for joining us tonight. I'm thrilled to stand before you all today on this special occasion at the UC San Diego Skagg School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences White Coat Ceremony. This is a momentous event that signifies the milestone um, in the journey of our student pharmacists. As the Associate Dean of Admissions and Recruitment and a dedicated practicing pharmacist of over 20 years, time flies when you're having fun, it is my distinct pleasure to extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you. Today we come together to celebrate the commitment, dedication, and all that hard work of our first year student pharmacists that we affectionately call P1s. We also celebrate the unwavering support and guidance provided by their families, loved ones, and mentors some of whom have joined us here in person or virtually tonight. So P1s and all your supporters that are here in person or virtually, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> On behalf of the admissions committee P1s, and some of the admissions committee members are here tonight, I want to relay a few things to you. One is, you're sitting in that seat tonight because we were impressed with your unique journey in pursuing the profession of pharmacy. Now, if you were to look to the person to your left and to your right, what you may notice is that, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you're like, wait, who's sitting next to me tonight? You will notice that maybe your experiences and achievements may differ from those of your classmates, but I want each of you to know that you deserve to be here, okay? So just remember that. So when that imposter syndrome voice starts talking, don't listen to it, okay? Second, I hope that as you're settling in and give yourselves time to settle in, it doesn't happen overnight, but as you're settling in, I hope that what you feel is that this is the place where you belong, okay? And finally, as you put on your white coats tonight for the first time, I hope you realize the symbolic act it represents, which is your commitment to the integrity, compassion, and excellence that defines our profession. So congratulations to you all. I eagerly look forward to witnessing your continued journey into the profession of pharmacy. I want to take just a brief moment to say that although I stand here alone, I don't do this work alone. And I want to share that I am representing our incredible admissions team and committee. And I'd like to give a special shout out to them. I'm deeply grateful for their commitment in conducting holistic admissions, recruitment, and mentorship with the utmost integrity. Thank you to our admissions and recruitment team. I want to give them a round of applause. <laughs> now, 
Now we're going to shift gears a little bit, and I have the pleasure of introducing our White Coat Ceremony guest speaker. Each year, we have the privilege of welcoming a guest who serves an, as an ex exceptional example of what can be accomplished with a pharmacy doctorate or a PharmD degree. This year, we're truly honored to have Dr. Nancy Yam joining us. Dr. Yam currently holds the esteemed position of the Associate Chief Pharmacy Officer at UC San Diego Health. She oversees two hospital sites and 100 and staff members, including pharmacists like myself, technicians, and pharmacy interns, P1s, she may be your boss, keep that in mind, soon, or in the future, like me. Dr. Yam's academic journey began here at UC San Diego, where she earned her Bachelor's of Science in Biochemistry. Then she pursued her passion for pharmacy and attained her pharmacy doctorate from UC San Francisco. And then she started her journey of continued postgraduate training. She did a one-year training, a residency training in acute care pharmacy at UC San Diego Health, followed by a second year residency training in health system pharmacy administration and leadership at Cedar sinai Medical Center. Dr. Yam, after completing that residency, decided to start that similar second year residency here at UC San Diego in pharmacy administration and leadership. And in addition to her role as the associate um, chief pharmacy officer, she also serves as the residency program director for this residency. I don't know how she has all this time, but Dr. Yam is also an active leader in regional and national pharmacy organizations. Throughout her career, Dr. Yam has achieved remarkable milestones, but as a fellow pharmacist practicing at UC San Diego Health myself, I've had the privilege of witnessing her resilience, unwavering dedication, and admirable grace, especially in challenging times like the pandemic. Dr. Yam played a pivotal role in ensuring the equitable and efficient distribution of vaccines, the administration of COVID treatments, and the continued management of various other critical medications, all while prioritizing the well-being of our patients at UC San Diego Health and the pharmacists dedicated to their care. So it's safe to say that Dr. Yam's expertise and leadership have made a tremendous positive impact on our profession, and we're really honored to have her here tonight. Please join me in extending a warm and enthusiastic welcome to Dr. Nancy Yam. Wow, thank you for that introduction. <laughs> So thank you, Dr. Atayi, for that introduction, and thank you to the distinguished faculty, the proud guests, and of course, the Doctor of Pharmacy candidates for inviting me here today. I'm honored and humbled to be at this important event at this most prestigious school. I feel like a little kid following in the footsteps of so many of my mentors and being asked to speak here. I'll be honest, and I'll say that as the event drew closer, I got more and more nervous about what I was going to say and how I was going to do it especially in front of everybody here, since it looks like a full house. I asked both my kids for advice. Lucas, my 11-year-old, said, just have ChatGPT write it for you. <laughs> Ella, my 10-year-old, said, I dance in front of a lot of people all the time, and I don't get nervous, so maybe you should just dance. <laughs> Needless to say, ChatGPT did not write this, and I will not be dancing today. <laughs> So what is a white coat ceremony? A white coat ceremony is a ritual, a momentous milestone that welcomes you into this new healthcare journey, profession, and community. It's symbolic of your formal start to the academic career and upholding the highest of standards. I'm privileged to be part of your welcoming committee and to be able to share this occasion with you. That is how important and special this ceremony is to is to me, and I hope you feel the same way today and as you reflect many years from now. To the newest class, I look out at you with awe and admiration and nervous excitement as well. I hold you in the highest regard of what you can do for this profession in the coming years and how you will make changes and pave the way for those who will be coming after you as well. 
And with that, I hope that what I say today brings you elation and hope as you enter this world of pharmacy. I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned so that you are excited to experience some of the similar feelings and so much more. In this evolving world of technology, as it continues to advance at lightning speed, it's more critical than ever, I think, to be human. Yes, I could have had ChatGPT write this, but I knew that it couldn't convey how I feel or how I felt. Although there can be nuanced tension between the two, I believe that there can be interconnectivity. As Aristotle said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Therefore, my own personal words of advice are what I deem to be simple. Easy for me to say, right? They are all for you to continue to show kindness, show empathy, show gratitude, be humble, and be resilient. So show kindness. You're going into a profession that works with many other healthcare professionals and providers, in addition to the patients that you will be serving. You will be collaborating with physicians, nurses, and other disciplines. The list just goes on. The stakes are high, and the rewards can be even higher. But remember that we are all in this together, and we're here for our patients, whether it's in the hospital, the ambulatory care side, or the community setting. I can't promise that there won't be any tension in the experiences that you will have to deal with, but remember that respect matters and kindness always counts. My ask is also that you don't forget about the ones that are not always seen and not always recognized in your journey. I talk about the list of people that we work with who are healthcare providers, and I ask that you be kind. However, there's also other people. One of my favorite memories takes me back about eight to nine years when I was talking to the facility facilities manager about our broken pipes and sinks in the pharmacy and of remodeling the bathroom. Yes, we remodeled places in the hospital as well. He said to me, I love working with you and your team. And I asked him why. He said, it's because even though you all have your doctorates, you treat us with respect. You treat me and my team with respect. You don't talk down to us and you consider us as equals. I find that to be one of my favorite compliments ever. I was so proud of my team and of, and of us. I still tell that story and I think about it often to remind myself that we all matter and that we're all humans and we deserve to be spoken to with respect. We don't have to agree all the time, but we should still be kind. Show empathy. You never know what's going on in someone else's life. You may be having the best day ever, but someone you're talking to may be dealing with their worst day ever. It may be real, it can be imagined, that doesn't matter. It's not relevant. What is relevant is that they feel the way they do, and it's critical for us to empathize. You may encounter patients who are not their best selves that day. You may encounter a co colleague who's dealing with more than you can see. View things from a different perspective, ask questions, listen to others, validate how they're feeling, challenge your own biases, because we all have them. Show gratitude. I consider myself to be someone who has, who has high expectations of people, especially the ones that I know can do a lot and so much. And I know that we also take you know, for granted those we love, like our family, our friends. And I know that we are truly indebted to all of them for our successes and for the chance to even have the opportunities that come our way. I'm sure many of you feel the same way as you think about this. One of the things that we probably don't do enough is to say thank you and that we appreciate them. So I have an ask of you. I ask that you say thank you to your family, friends, teachers, mentors, whether they're able to make it here tonight or if they're watching virtually. It took a whole team of selfless people to get us here, and we shouldn't forget that. Be humble and show humility. This profession is so much more than us and sometimes requires us to have a lower focus on ourselves for the good of others. It will require us to acknowledge ourselves in ways we may not have done before. One of my other most memorable moments was when I was a PGY-1 or postgraduate year one resident talking to my current boss who's also in the audience <laughs> and an associate dean here too, so it's making me a little bit more nervous, about completing a second year residency. I droned on and on and on. Eventually he stopped me and said, Nancy, it's not all about you. I look back at that snapshot in time with great appreciation, and I can laugh at myself about it too, because to me it was a defining moment. This is more than just about me, it's more than us, 
It's also about the patients and the profession as well. So know your limits, your imperfections. You will make mistakes. And gaps, you'll have gaps in knowledge as you learn at one of the best institutions in the world. Keep an open mind. Appreciate and value what you have. Be mindful of things and keep things that matter in perspective. Recognize your value, but also value those around you. Be resilient. Resiliency from the past several years has more than likely shaped us. You've probably adapted when needed. I'm certain there will be more challenging times ahead. However, I have faith that you will all do many important and great things, even if it's unexpected. By nature of where you are today and who you want to be, you are deeply rooted in this ecosystem and hopefully optimistic, but also culturally conscientious. Believe in yourself and challenge yourself to innovate, aspire to do more. In the next years ahead, I ask that you collaborate with your colleagues, share knowledge, strive to elevate the profession of pharmacy for the betterment of all. Don't let what you think you can't do stop you from elevating yourselves and the profession. My belief in success in this profession is predicated on being able to do an environmental scan, to be aware of what is around us. Change is inevitable and taking accountability is a choice. So always evolve and encourage others to do the same. Make meaningful choices to drive practice. Be bold. Bring value and advance practice. You will make a difference. So in the words of my son, who was two years old, to my daughter on her first birthday about 10 years ago, when we woke her up, you made it. <laughs> like there was any chance, you know, <laughs> doubt. It's fitting in this moment in that you made it. You made it to the white coat ceremony, and truly, it's part of the beginning and doesn't end here. There is a long and wonderful path ahead for each one of you to pave. It will be different. It will be personal. Celebrate your successes and celebrate the success of others. I hope that when you leave here today in your white coats, you know and you believe that what you do can provide value. You may even be one <clears throat> to redefine what value means. However, it's not a given, and that it may take time, it will take dedication, it will make, take countless number of hours and teamwork and resiliency. With that said, I look forward to seeing how you change the world. So welcome to this rewarding profession. Congratulations again, and thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful message, Dr. Yam. Next, I'd like to introduce our Associate Dean for Student Affairs, Dr. Candice Morello, and she will introduce our next guest speaker. Welcome, everyone. I'll get to talk to a little bit more in a few minutes. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce you to one of our current students. She is our current ASP president. Please join me in welcoming Katie Gap. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the students, staff, and faculty at the UCSD Skagg School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, I would like to extend my warmest welcome to the class of 2027 and to all of your friends and family attending today's white coat ceremony. My name is Katie Gap, and I'm the current president of the Association of Student Pharmacists here at Skaggs and a P3 student in the class of 2025. First and foremost, congratulations to the class of 2027. You've all worked so hard to get here today and should be immensely proud of yourselves and all of your accomplishments. Tonight is a night of celebration and marks a major step in your journey to becoming future pharmacists. It's a culmination of all your perseverance, determination, passion, and commitment to excellence that will continue to serve you as you strive to serve your patients. Today, as you receive your white coats, this represents the beginning of a career that is wide open and expanding in new ways 
for future pharmacists to impact and improve patients' lives. First of all, I want to say that your time here will go by so fast. I remember sitting in those exact same seats you're in just two years ago, so excited about taking the first steps to one of the last parts of my formal education. And yet, I can't believe that I'm standing here today as a third year student. It's truly been a wonderful ride. Over the last couple years, I've met so many new friends, met the most amazing faculty and staff, and gotten countless opportunities to experience and learn, both in the classroom and in practice. Within the first few weeks of school, once you're all settled into your living arrangements and start getting to know classmates and exploring campus organizations, you'll learn that many students will seek out countless ways to get involved and take on much more than just classwork. There are so many opportunities to get involved in student organizations and free clinics and work as an intern in one of the local hospitals, retail stores, and industry internships, where we learn not just how to help and teach patients, but also how to be leaders, organizing and following through on various projects and commitments. I've learned so much over the last two years and gotten to work closely with many of my classmates, upperclassmen, as well as faculty and staff. But as with anything worth working towards, there will definitely be ups and downs. With school, always comes some level of pressure, stress, and doubts. There will likely be days when the combination of everything can feel absolutely overwhelming. Trust me, I've been there. But with perseverance and hard work, you will learn to meet the demands of pharmacy school. In these last couple years, I've come to realize that there's so much more to learn and you have so much room to grow, but you've got the next four years to build your skills. After all, everyone always says that becoming a pharmacist means you're a lifelong learner, and I definitely believe that to be true. So as you begin your first quarter here, I encourage you to hold on to those thoughts, that you are capable of handling and accomplishing more than you think you can, and even when times get tough, everything eventually passes. So now before I let you all go, I would like to share some advice. First, be adaptable. When things disrupt the flow, whether it's a career opportunity that falls through or a project that runs into difficulties, be ready and willing to move forward and make the changes necessary. You will find that there's an abundance of opportunities here at Skaggs. So don't close any doors that you haven't even opened. You really don't know what's out there until you try. Second, work hard. Put your best foot forward in whatever you do. It is always good to know that you've given it your best effort. And lastly, be kind to one another. Help each other out when possible. Pharmacy really is a small world, and your kindness goes a long way, whether you know it or not. So I encourage you all to remember this excitement and passion and carry it with you throughout your next four years and into your future careers. All of us here at Skaggs cannot wait to see the great things your class will accomplish. So again, from the entire Skaggs student body, congratulations and welcome to the family. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Candace Morello, Associate Dean for Student Affairs. My Office of Student Affairs team, which was comprised of many different people this week, um, were thrilled to be able to spend the several days with you during orientation for the class of 2027. Um, can't believe it. We have such a phenomenal group this year. I just am grateful to all the families for entrusting us with your students. And uh, we are absolutely thrilled, as you can tell, to invite them and have them as part of our Skaggs community and family. So do you want to hear a little bit about this class of 2027, right? 
Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. I don't get tired of saying it. It's amazing. Our ad admissions office did a phenomenal job. This class is comprised of 70 student pharmacists that have been hand-selected from a very competitive applicant pool. 77% identify as females and 23% as males. And the average age is 24, sound about right, with the range of 20 to 37. Seven of them are participating in our seven-year BS PharmD program. And as a result, they will achieve their BS at the end of their P1 year. The remainder of the class already have their bachelor's degrees, and they came in with a very strong average GPA of 3.5. Very outstanding. You'll soon learn where they went to school uh, and where they graduated from when I call their names. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin donning your white coats. And what I just want to remind you all it, for my, uh, my P1s is that um, take your white coats with you when you move your seats. <laughs> just a little friendly reminder from our staff. Thank you. OK, so I would like to invite um, our Dean Best. Sorry. <laughs> Dean Best to be right over here, um, and then our amazing photographer who's actually been with us since 2002 when we started the school. This is Kevin. Hands for him, too. He hasn't changed a bit. And um, before I forget, could I just get a round of applause for our amazing Office of Student Affairs team and ex extra people? Okay, so I think we're about ready. Let's get going here. And we'll start off with the class of 2027. We have Anna Abaya. She graduated with a bachelor's from University of California, Santa Barbara. Next, we have Shreya Agrawal, graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Riverside. Sarah Awet, graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. Ramez Akrush graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Riverside. <laughs> Jafreen Alam graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. Spriha Awale graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Davis. <laughs> Chelsea Boss graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Los Angeles. Danielle Birch will graduate with a bachelor's as part of the seven-year BS PharmD program from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Anna.
Angel Cardona graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Riverside. Jenny Chan graduated with a bachelor's from the California State University, Fullerton. These are great pictures, really. Seriously. Oh. Truk Chow graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. Adeline Chang graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. <laughs> Sachiko Cora, oh good, just a minute, stay right there, just a minute, just a minute. I was so excited to do the saw part. <laughs> okay, Sachiko Correa, Correa graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Santa Cruz. Christina Dang graduated with the bachelor's from California Polytech State University, San Luis Obispo. Vivian Din graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Chloe Doe graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. Amal Estrada graduated with the bachelor's from Mills College. Hold on. And a master's from California State Polytech University, Pomona. Maya Fernandez Arias will graduate with a bachelor's as part of the seven-year BS PharmD program from University of California, San Diego. Danny Fung graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Santa Barbara. <laughs> Kevin Garcia graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Riverside. Rachel Graham graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Riverside. <laughs> Wook Ho graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. Rebecca Ho graduated with the bachelor's from California State Polytech University, Pomona. <laughs> Anna Hovac graduated with the bachelor's from the University of Nevada, Reno.
<laughs> okay. Mirai Key graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Berkeley. Minju Kim graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. Florence Labrador graduated with a bachelor's from Point Loma Nazarene University. <laughs> Jennifer Legg graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. Jill Lester graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Emily Levin Rosenschein graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Thomas Lewis graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Fionn Lee graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. <laughs> Vanessa Luna graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. Austin McDonald Shedd graduated with the bachelor's from Clemson University. <laughs> Lauren McKnight graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Vivian Mendez graduated with the bachelor's from the University of Texas, El Paso. <laughs> Trammy No graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. Ashley Wynn graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Christy Nguyen graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, Merced. Nguyen graduated with the bachelor's for the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> J. 
Jonathan Nguyen graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. Matthew Nguyen graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. <laughs> Tiffany Nguyen graduated with the bachelor's from the University, oh, wrong person. <laughs> well. All right, hold on. <laughs> Not quite yet? Okay. Woo! Okay, got you. Well, hello. Okay, let's, uh, Tiffany, okay, just checking. All right, so we have Tiffany Nguyen graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. <laughs> Jordan Nicholas graduated with the bachelor's from California State University, Long Beach. Alachi Wosu graduated with the bachelor's from University of Redlands. <laughs> Madeline Oblea graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Los Angeles. David Olinger graduated with the bachelor's from San Francisco State University. <laughs> Rushika Patel graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Santa Cruz. Teresa Patrikian will graduate with the bachelor's as part of the seven-year BS PharmD program from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> William Pham graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Isabella Ramisco graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. Casey Schoonover graduated with the bachelor's from the University of Washington. <laughs> Afiana Shifero graduated pardon me, will graduate with the bachelor's as part of the seven-year BS PharmD program from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Ali Spong will graduate with the bachelor's as part of the seven-year BS PharmD program 
from the University of California, San Diego. Eugen Sung graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Saba Tashakor graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> We're popular. Alan Tatenlong will graduate with the bachelor's as part of the seven-year BS PharmD program from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Priya Fandi graduated with a bachelor's from San Diego State University. <laughs> Tiffany Toe graduated with a bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. Jenny Tran graduated with the bachelor's from California State University, Fullerton. <laughs> Annabelle Trong will graduate as part of the seven-year BS PharmD program at the University of California, San Diego. Rebecca Trung graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Princess Turner graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Los Angeles. Camille Utleg graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. <laughs> Hong Yu Wong graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Davis. Mark Vincent Wico graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Riverside. <laughs> Tia Williams graduated with the bachelor's from the University of Laval. How'd I do? <laughs> I called it Louisville before, so what do I know? <laughs> Marshall Wu graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Los Angeles. Fame Wadakul graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Irvine. <laughs> Emma 
And last, but not certainly not least, we have David Zen, graduated with the bachelor's from the University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, we got time. That was fast, okay? That was the fastest I think we've ever done that. <sighs> Well, I was going to say, please join me in congratulating the class of 2027. Let's just do that again. Our faculty, our staff, your fellow students, your family, we're all here to support you and can't be happier for you. What I'd ask for you now is each of you would stand up, grab your oath of a pharmacist. I'd also like to have any other uh, students or pharmacists stand up, please. And we are going to have the oath of the pharmacist up on the screen for everybody to commit and recommit the oath of a pharmacist. I'll get us started. Everybody ready? Good, okay. I promise to devote myself to a lifetime of service to others through the profession of pharmacy. I promise to devote myself to a lifetime of service to others through the Please join me again in congratulating our class of 2027 on joining the pharmacy profession. Okay. We are so excited to train and mentor this impressive group of compassionate young professionals you see before you. Our faculty and preceptors are world-class, national and international leaders in their fields, including innovative clinical programs and state-of-the-art drug discovery, development, and research. They are also some of the most dedicated and talented educators that I have ever met. Faculty, please stand and be recognized. The glue that holds our school together, supporting every program and students and faculty alike, are our devoted staff. Some are here tonight, and you will interact with many more during your time in our program. Please join me in recognizing and thanking all of our staff. family, friends, and loved ones. One of the unique aspects of our program is that we are small. This allows our students to get to know each other very well and to become close with their faculty, preceptors, and staff. We plan to support and help our students succeed and serve as their second family and home away from home. 
We are so excited to get to know the class of 2027 and watch you all shine. So, class of 2027, congratulations. Welcome to the Skaggs family. And in closing, I invite everyone to join us uh, for a reception out on the patio. The students will stay down here briefly for a group photo. Kevin will instruct us with what to do. Um, and for all of the family, please stay in the back of the auditorium while they take the photo, if you want to watch the photo. Uh, and if not, you are welcome to go ahead to the reception now and the students will join us as soon as the photo is taken. Thank you all. Okay, students, everybody come to the front, please. I don't know what 